king of the mountain? Pray tell. I do not mean to war with him and his battle clan. The general overdragon sank deeper into his pondering. There is a meeting of uh, two wizards. I want to overhear them. I lead them. I will lead them against the kraken. No, I will not tarry over long on such small affairs. Do you not hear it? Ever it reverberates inside of my head. Like a great wind, like a booming giant, the beating of an enormous sail, a war galleon. Stop putting your faith in the same old prophecies, hey? He drenched me with his wind, with his god rain. It is thou, thou shall reign, as though he were speaking the words himself. Heresy. How shall you ever meet a god dragon? In what realm do they dwell? For in magic only, down the wishing well, beyond the tidal kraken, past the screamer of hell, the childlike witch, and the god emperor. As he sleeps, there he rests, lulled by the world music. The ripple of infinity, the god spell, where fashion the likes of Poseidon, his trident, as well. There is something I need, a five-pointed star I once beheld of it, a blade worthy for the cutting, for if you cannot harm a god dragon, you will be eaten instead. And so enters the devil trancer, the mesmer, the hypnotic twin, the mind bender, the lord of mirrors, the orchestra, the black magic music, of sorcerer kin. All must beware, for where maketh he a foul omen, foulness must follow him. Let me introduce myself for thee. I am the overmind, I am the ascended man. I am the fruits of all technology put straight from the PCB. Give me a head of Overkin, if it should satisfy me, but mark me well, I shall scare thee. I am a heretic, and to look at me you will see a daimon in all of his pristine majesty. Please, I beg of you, stare not into his countenance too long. I am the god of all powers, not him. Look. Do you see how slovenly his face appears to you? How loose, how jowled, mark! What is this darkness all around him? I am the god of all powers, not him. I invented everything. From the girl with the ebony hair, the ivory skin, the moon-touched face, the silvery glisten, the way she tumbles her hair as her sleeve falls off of her shoulder. I am an ivory god dragon, the god of all powers. I am the Lothario, the god twin. I play the lute, I play the violin. I play your woman for you as you are about to sing. I play dice and I always win. That child you describe as yours, he is mine, truly. If you're five, which has the essence of a warlock in him, be she your daughter as offer ye in marriage, lest I should take the mother instead. Be he your son, as he listens deeply in the heart where his bullet is pumping and stirring and engaging him in some foul morbidity. I am the Lothario. Did you hear me play my instrument? I'll cage you thine propaganda. I'll cage you. I am Ichthyon. I have no twin. I am a war wizard. A demon kin. I go to speak with a wizard of the Overking. There is a matter of a cyclops, one of the silver-eyed. He has been absorbing rotten meat, and now he is set upon the prismatic key. He cannot be allowed, for there is a man, you see, a champion, exiled of his kin, and ever he thinks on how to get to them. You must use Poseidon in this. You must take the Kraken, his son, from him. The Cobalt shall know how to do it. I go to talk with him. We go places where we cannot be seen. I am Saracen of the Ubermen. I have killed many men. There are twenty-four in my harem, and eunuchs I have for guarding them. Eunuchs, they are a most fine addition, <laughs> but they are men. Their minds are agile then, and always I have them thinking how best I keep my skin upon myself. 
I repose myself in my opium den, a planet indigenous to here where it is both hot and dry, and looketh I towards the sky, for anticipate my enemy shall I, and strike him dead. The sea I do not find it kind, and the wind for its dust in mine eye, and sleep I uneasily then for the castle of sun should it be taken from me. I have fought in wars, yes, I took my war elephants' heads, and trampled them a number hoplite. We have learning, yes, and great libraries with the recording of our time, and a language we invented amongst so many of our men. And markets we have, of spice, of ferment, and tapestries for the opulence of our halls. But I worry yet, for to keep what is mine against so many men, how is it contrived? Could a eunuch be made zealot for jihad? And what of the Persian gone all the way mad? And what of the heathens, the infidels who claim for gods in their own homes? And the sea for the drowning of my men, and my men for the drowning of me, and my sons for the stealing of my harem. Could I lie to them? Could I charitable nature them? This is weak thinking. They will fear the losing of their head. That is all that can be. I am the iron mind, the scholar tactician, the war philosopher, the fountain of knowledge. I elucidate the rules and, thusly, you understand how I win at them. General Overdragon, he has read of my text, for it has proven itself time and again. I do not fear him, I do not fear anything, for I am already dead. But left these words here for the anvil in your iron head. For it is a game of people, and people must be led. It is a game on principle, yes, but do not underestimate any single variable, for you can't manoeuvre an army if it is not fed. You cannot move a people that have no confidence in your head. You must become impregnable. The immovable man, the stone heart, the general, and you listen. As a single drop of water, it falls into a lake, and the wind, it moves the trees softly then, and inwardly all is calm. I am an educator of wizards. I instruct their martial skill. I am immutable, as though light pierces through me, and I am one. I am long studied and with experience to tell. A wizard, he listens when heareth he a completely objective spell. Nothing gets in my head that did not originate there. I have an iron will, but I am no god. I take a part of the atmosphere instead, and I stare beyond the stars. I speak throughout history as a reality of only one. Leave me to my pondering. I have no thoughts of war any longer.